Bible school. Bible school. Thank you. Bible school's coming up. That's going to be July 10, 11, and 12. Um, Katie's working really hard at that, trying to get everybody rounded up and in the right places. It'll be from 5 to 7 in the evening. Um, the theme is the food truck race or something to do with food trucks. And I think they're going to have a kind of a special thing on the last night, Tuesday night. So please, if you can help out in any way, um, that would be greatly appreciated. Any other announcements? I'm sorry to see so many of our family is gone. They must be on vacation or have family visiting or hopefully not sick. So anyway, be thinking about all of the people that usually sit next to you in the pew and um, give them a call this week and see how things are going. All right, let us stand and begin our worship.
believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the community of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father, we come in thanksgiving this morning, for it is a good thing to gather in your name, to be brought together in a place where we hear your words proclaim, words of life, words that will seek and show and guide us how to live as Christ would have us to live. For we know, Father, that your call has gone forth to each and every one, and that your will, your desire, is that not one should be lost. And yet there are those in this world who think they have walked too far. There are those who think that they are beyond the love of the living God. And so you sent your Son so they might know. And now you send us so they also might know. But Father, your love is sufficient. Your love is sufficient for every man, woman, and child. And your grace through your Son, Jesus Christ, has taken the sins of the whole world. Father, help us to live our lives in light of this truth. Help us to rise from our beds in the morning in the sure knowledge that as we go forth, we can go forth in your holy cause, a cause of redemption, a cause of healing, a cause of leading back those who have gone astray and have lost their way. For indeed, Father, we have been called and seek to rise 
to the call of discipleship in the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Father, help us by each and every day, by the words we speak and by the actions we pursue, to glorify you now and forever. We pray this morning, Father, for those who are sick, that their health might be restored. And we lift up to you those who mourn, that they may be comforted. For, Father, we know there is that time and that place where every tear is going to be wiped away. There will be no more pain and suffering. Death shall be no more. And families which have been separated will be brought together again in a place where there is no separation. Forgive us of the sins we've committed against you, Father, by both word and deed, and also in a special prayer we lift up to you, the children, that they may be held safe within your hands, that we may always set a good example before them. And now, Father, we ask that you remind us to pray together as your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, I would be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Second hymn this morning is hymn number 77, How Great Thou Art. If you please stand and sing all four verses.
it is working. And I don't think I have any working. children, unless there's some young at heart out there that might like come up. But today I was going to talk about the scripture that um, Tony just read from Galatians about loving and serving and doing the best that you can with other people. And so I was going to have the children hold different items to see what they knew what could be done with a pair of work gloves. Well, we've got youth at a work camp this week that are building things or constructing things or painting things or breaking things, all because they want to serve God and they want to serve whoever else that they can help out with God's love that's coming through them. Or maybe it's somebody that is kind of lonely or something and they can play a game. This is a game that we play with our granddaughter. It's, I found it. And in the picture, you try to find a shovel or a rake or something. And sometimes that's all people want is just a little attention, a little love, a little one-on-one -on -one time. And so you can play a game with them. <coughs> well, sometimes maybe you can't go and visit, but you can send cards. And I know Gary in his class likes to have cards made up. The children, you know, will write something on a card or put their hand on a card. And Charlotte has done that also and made cards and send them out to different people in the church. So we can show love and care by sending cards. And so there's a lot of different ways that we can take that Galatians scripture into our hearts and show our love and our care, and our servant attitude. So, thank you.
second scripture this morning is found on page 70 in your pew Bibles. It comes from the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verses 51 through 62. This is the lectionary reading for the third Sunday after Pentecost, and I'm reading this from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Starting with verse 51, we hear these words. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, <clears throat> and he sent his messengers ahead of him. And on their way, they entered the village of Samaritans to prepare for his arrival. But they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. And when the disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them. But he turned and rebuked them. And then they went on to another village. And as they were going along the road, someone said to him, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And to another he said, Follow me. And he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I'll follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those of my home. And Jesus said to him, No one puts his hand to the plow on what's back is fit for the kingdom of God. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is going to Jerusalem. He's going to Jerusalem because the Lord God wants him to go to Jerusalem. Because he has a destiny. A destiny given by God. He's come into this world not simply to pass through this life and do what good he might do and then be gone. He's come into this world with a specific purpose, and that purpose is to do the will of God during his earthly life. Think about that. He came into this life not simply to do some good, to help some folks, to speak some kind words, to wipe some tears, to share some laughter, and then be gone. He came in with a purpose, and the purpose was given to him by his father, a God-given purpose. And what was that purpose? purpose was to do the will of his heavenly father. And so I ask you, what's your purpose? Is it simply to pass through this life, to do some good, to wipe some tears, to share some laughter, and then go and be gone? Or do you not, because we just confessed it in here, do you not have the same purpose that Jesus Christ had which is to fulfill the will of God here on this earth. Because as a fellowship, we pray that every Sunday. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what we're saying. Father, let your will be done. And what is the will of our Father? It's not some great mystery that none of us can comprehend. It's not something that only the deeply religious and pious can possibly understand. It's a simple truth that the love of God has gone forth to this creation, His creation. Creation that He made and pronounced good. He made us. He said we were good. And yet something happened. Sin entered in. Sin entered in when people stopped doing what God wanted them to do. When people stopped being obedient to God's will, Sin enters in, and corruption enters in, and now Jesus has come to undo that. Jesus has come to open the gates of heaven to all those who will come. So it tells you in the Bible, he set his face on Jerusalem. For Jerusalem is where God is calling him. Jerusalem is where God is sending him, and he will go where his God calls him. He will go where his God sends him. 
Now, does he know what's going to happen in Jerusalem? Absolutely so. Not only does he know, he shared this truth with his disciples numerous times. He is building a kingdom that is forever, forever, and ever. And he begins to make this journey. This journey to fulfill God's will. And he sends the disciples ahead of him to prepare places for their stay. They enter a Samaritan village. Samaritans and the Jewish people have been at odds forever. And when they find out that Jesus is headed to Jerusalem, then they're not going to open their doors to him. They're not going to offer him the hospitality that you would give to another traveler. They're going to shun him. Let him suffer the hardship of the road without giving any comfort to him simply because, listen, he's not one of them. Therefore, their hearts are hard. And it makes James and John so angry because they love Jesus so much. And they know what Jesus is trying to do or they think they know what Jesus is trying to do. And they love him so much. And the fact that these Samaritans would refuse him simple hospitality, a cool drink of water, shade from the sun, <coughs> the simplest, easiest things to do. Their anger is expressed when they go to him and they go, Lord, would you have us call down fire from heaven to destroy them? The way Elijah did to the prophets of Baal. They have insulted Jesus Christ, the man whom they follow. They have been ugly to Jesus Christ, a man who they've given up everything to go with him on his mission. And they ask for permission to destroy these hateful, mean people. These are the same two that asked Jesus, they come to Jesus, James and John, and they found somebody casting out demons. They said, Lord, let's forbid them to do it. The fact that they're casting out demons seems oblivious to them, but they want Jesus to stop this. They want Jesus to punish these people. What does it take? What was Jesus' response? He turns and he rebukes them. Now, folks, we overuse words. And in the process of doing so, we lose the meaning. Words like love. We love each other. We love God. We love cheeseburgers. You know, we lose the meaning to the world. Rebuke is one that has lost its meaning. Rebuke comes from the word meaning to beat down. Meaning when Jesus turned on those disciples, you remember when he rebuked Peter? Because Peter said, hey, let's not do it God's way, right after telling him that he knew that Jesus was the Messiah. And he said, no, Lord, we will we'll find another way. And he says, get behind me. He rebuked him. Get behind me, Satan. Now he rebukes James and John. Rebuke means to beat down. It's like, do you not know? Do you not understand what it is we are doing, what I'm doing? I have not. You listening? I haven't come to punish people. I haven't come to get vengeance on the sinners. I haven't come to destroy. I've been sent by God to reclaim, to heal, to make whole, to restore. You want to destroy in the name of God? You want to reject people in the name of God? You want to cause pain and suffering in the name of God? What God are you worshiping? not the God of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ would pay any price required to fulfill his Father's will. Whatever scorn he received, whatever rejection he received, it didn't matter. Folks, it did not matter because it wasn't about him. It was about God what God wanted. Jesus knew what God wanted. Do you? How can you live your life as a Christian 
if you're not sure what it is that God wants of you. And yet it is such a simple thing. He said, I want you to love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your mind and all your soul and all your strength. And I want you to love your neighbor as yourself and do this. And they will know you are mine. How are you going to make it more simple than that? Yes, Lord, you don't know what people have said to me. You don't know how people have treated me. You don't know how those people were acting. You don't know what they said. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. What matters is the will of God, and the will of God is reclamation of the creation. What matters is that God asks you to carry and bear the good witness. To let the light of God and the love of God show through you to all that you meet. You will never build a kingdom with your anger, with your rejection, with your scorn, or with your judgment. Ever. Jesus Christ is not only teaching a lesson with his words, he's teaching a lesson with his life. And I can promise you, as you well know, they'll forget what you say, but they'll never forget how you behave. You not realize, you read the scripture, what so amazed the people about Jesus among many things. One of the things that just like the people were just like was the fact that what he said and what he did was the same thing. What he said and what he did was the same thing. When they're going, Lord, do you want us to call down fire and destroy these people? Jesus Christ was saying, pray and love your enemy. That's pretty clear, isn't it? I mean, there's no add-ons to that that needs clarification. I want you to pray for those who hate and despise you. I want you to love those who hate and despise you. <coughs> but they hate and despise you. So what? You're not helping with your return hate. You're called to love one another. Even as I have loved you. How did he love you? He laid down his life for you. That's how he loved you. Agape, unconditional love. I love you because that's who I am, not because of what you do. Jesus Christ came not to be proven right. He came to make us right. To make us right with his Father. Folks, we have such a calling. And if God calls, he equips, he enables, and he empowers. A lot of what you're reading here in Luke is only found in Luke. Part of the message of this is that Christianity is not sunshine and butterfly. It's part of life. The question is, will you use that the way Christ did? Everybody has problems. Everybody has hardship. Everybody knows suffering. But you can take that and use it to help those around you. Or you'll be destroyed by it. Not really many options there. God works for the good in all things. Look at the life of Jesus Christ. Look at the life of those who profess Christ and then live as Christ called them to live. God works for the good in all things. When those disciples were going, oh, we need to call down fire, Jesus is going, oh, you need to pray for these people who just rejected you. You need to pray for your enemies. You need to turn the other. You need to never give up because God never gives up. The love of God is relentless for His creation. And he calls you to have that same relentless love for those around you. And no, it's not easy. And no, it's not fun. <coughs> but I tell you what you can find. People like to tell you what they believe. 
the problem with what they believe is if it's a belief, it may or may not be true. And then they can tell you what they know. Let me tell you what I know. I know that those who seek the will of God and obey the will of God may indeed in this life suffer many hardships and suffer many sorrows. But you know what they will also know? Joy. True joy. Not happiness. Happiness is fleeting. It comes and goes. It's a temporary thing. But there's a joy. You're told in the Bible. That's the word of God, right? For the people of God. This isn't the, is the good news, not the good advice. Right? The good news. What God has done. You're told to rejoice in all things. All things. What all means. Rejoice in all things because you know God knows. You know that God has it in His hands. You know that God searches not this exterior, but the interior. He knows what's in your heart. You have these people come up to Jesus as he's journeying down the road. He's going to his death so that we might live. And they come up and go, Lord, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to go with you wherever you go. He's not soft-selling his call. He's, well, let me tell you, you know, nests, fox have dens, and birds have nests. I haven't even got a place to lay my head. Is that what you're after? Do you realize this? Well, let me go bury my father. Well, let the dead bury the dead. Let me go say goodbye. No. For anyone who puts his hand in the plow and looks back, isn't worthy of the kingdom of God. I told him in the first service this morning, I don't, I never, I don't plow. Okay, I don't have a horse wheel, plow, all this. So I had to read all of this. And plowing, you have one hand on the leash to the animal and one hand on the plow. Folks, if you look back, where do you think that plow is going to go? Anybody who puts their hand to the plow and looks back. When you take your eyes off God, God's in front of you, folks. He's not behind you. That's what repent means. Repent doesn't mean to rinse your clothes, put ashes on your head, gnash your teeth. Repent means turn around. That's it. Turn around. You are going the wrong way. God is that way. You're going that way. Bishop Joe of the United Methodist Church commented on the question that you're asked, the ordained ministers are asked each year, are you moving on towards perfection? Perfection is God. Are you moving on towards God? And of course, the answer to that would be Yes. Because if you're not, as he said, then where are you going? If you're not moving towards God, where are you going? This isn't rocket science. What good would it do for God to give us this book filled with words that most of us can't comprehend? People like to treat the Bible as a great mystery. That's people who don't read the Bible. The Bible is as clear as you can get the love of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ doing the will of God so that we might have life, not just life, but life abundantly. The call to us, as I have been sent, so are you, so am I sending you. And these things that I have done, greater things than these, you will do. Folks, you have been blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed. And in all of that, you're equipped to be the blessing of God that you be. You can live your life no matter what. No matter the pain, no matter the suffering, no matter the hardship, no matter the difficulty. You can live knowing you live in the presence of the living God. So, preacher, you don't you, you don't you don't understand what I'm facing. Well, here's what I know. Here's what I know, not what I believe. What shall separate us from the love of God? It tells you that in the scripture. What can separate you from the love of God? Not life, not death, not power, not principalities, and the list goes on and on and on. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Therefore, you can live your life as Christ has called you to live. 
You can turn the other cheek. You can turn the second now. Please, you can pray for the enemies of those who despise and hate you. You were put there for them. God's already taken care of you. They need your help. They need your witness. They need your wine. Not your judgment. Not your condemnation. They need your love. We are indeed a people rich and blessed. And we're called to be a blessing to all that we need. We read of Jesus setting his face to Jerusalem. Can you set your face? <clears throat> we read of Jesus doing the, of being obedient to God. Are you obedient to God in all things and all times? Folks, trust in God and fear not. Trust in God and fear not. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Father, We start with a passion to serve, to glorify, to bear witness, and then someone hurts our feelings. Or they don't treat us the way we should be treated. We look back and away from you. Father, increase our faith and help our unbelief. Father, we are so easily led astray. But if we keep our eyes focused upon you, if we center our lives upon you, then we shall be what you intended us to be when you called us into this existence. And then we will serve you and glorify you as you have always intended. For your glory, Father, for your honor, yes, we pray. Amen. closing hymn this morning is hymn number 400 in your hymnals, Come Thy Fount of Every Blessing. Please stand. Sing all three of those.